We are back with another day of the Hoop School Media Top 100 Countdown, and at number 56 team in the country, we have the West Virginia Mountaineers. What's up, college basketball fans? I'm Hoop School Media co-founder Austin Getchy, and welcome to the Hoop School Media Top 100 College Basketball Teams Countdown. In this series, we'll be counting down our top 100 teams for next season and releasing a video every day until the college basketball season begins. If you enjoy this content, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and give our social medias a follow. Simple things like that help more college basketball fans like you enjoy our content. With that being said, enjoy the rest of the video and 99 other videos in this series. West Virginia's offseason was nothing short of chaotic. It started out on a good note with head coach Bob Huggins making some major waves in the transfer portal. However, that only lasted so long. Huggins made homophobic comments in a radio show and also got a DUI, both of which led to him no longer being the head coach in the Mountaineers. Athletic director Ren Baker conducted a search for the coach, which included some big national names. However, they stayed in-house on an interim basis, elevating assistant coach Josh Eiler, who had been with the program in some form since 2007, to their interim head coach. West Virginia is planning on conducting another national search following this season. West Virginia also had some significant losses. Eric Stevenson, Kedrian Johnson, and Emmett Matthews all exhausted their eligibility. They also lost big man Jimmy Bell Jr., who transferred to Mississippi State. After Huggins left, that started a new wave of players into the portal. Forward Trey Mitchell transferred to Kentucky. Guard Joe Toussaint transferred to Texas Tech. Backup forward James Okonkwo and Mohamed Wagu were on the move as well. Okonkwo committed to North Carolina and Wagu committing to Alabama. Despite working in a tough situation, Eilert was still able to keep a lot of the portal class Huggins brought in. The best player there is Syracuse big man Jesse Edwards. Edwards thrives on defense, averaging 2.7 blocks per game on a 10.5 block percentage. He is also an elite rebounder, averaging over 10 rebounds per game, in addition to being a decent inside scorer. Another big time transfer brought in was Arizona guard Kirk Kreisa, who entered the portal after Huggins' departure, but ultimately decided to come back. Kreisa has his fair share of critics, but still brings lots of value. He's a very good passer with a 26.3% assist rate last season. Kreisa also led the Pac-12 in three-pointers made with 83 on the season. Montana State transfer wing Raekwon Battle also came into West Virginia, but questions have arose about his status this season as a two-time transfer who hasn't graduated. While he likely won't be eligible, he's shown the ability to be a go-to three-level scorer. Whenever the Mountaineers do have him available, he'll make a big impact with his scoring. Jose Perez returns to West Virginia after not playing last year due to transfer rules, despite also entering the portal this offseason. He's a forward who is a very good passer, having an assist rate of 31.2% at Manhattan, and he's also very good at gains to the free throw line. However, he was a non-factor in his previous high major experience at Marquette, so there are questions on how valuable he will be at this level. Eiler also got a few power forwards from the portal. A cook a cook entered the portal in August, and was off to West Virginia the same day. He has lots of entry with his shot blocking and athleticism. Quinn Slazinski, an Iona transfer who previously committed to St. John's, also ended up at West Virginia. He's a skilled player who previously started some games at a high major level at Louisville. West Virginia also has some guards back. One is Kobe Johnson, who started some games last season and was an efficient player, although with some low volume. Seth Wilson is another returning guard. He is known as a three-point shooter, shooting over 40% from deep last season. If Battle does not get a waiver, those two guys will be in consideration for a starting job. Another guard unlikely to be eligible is Eastern Michigan transfer Noah Farrakhan. He is not a super efficient player, but is decently skilled when creating for himself. Some backup forwards also return. Pat Swemnick is one of them, who is a solid rebounder and rim protector. Josiah Harris, who saw limited playing time, also returns. Florida State redshirt guard Jeremiah Bembry also committed to the Mountaineers, who was a three-star in the 2022 class. West Virginia added one freshman, international forward prospect Offrey Neve. He played for Israel at U18 this summer, where he averaged 11 points and 7 rebounds per game. Overall, I'm not super high in this West Virginia team, especially if Battle doesn't play, which would be a game-changer. However, they'll still be competitive enough and have some top-end talent, but I'm really worried about the depth. I currently have the Mountaineers sitting at 10th in the Big 12, 
and they'll have their fair share of opportunities in that conference to build a tournament resume. West Virginia fans, comment below your thoughts and where you'd have the Mountaineers ranked personally. We'll be back tomorrow for the number 55 team in the country. Subscribe and turn on post notifications so you don't miss it.